I'm so glad you're back for another fun video. This one is with baskets with a really, really fun stitch. I've used this on a hat pattern. It's really, really cute and it's easy to do. And it's a great texture that's an easy repeat. I'll be going over small, medium, and large baskets, but these are all quite small sizes. I use them as plant covers because I find that they are so cute. I, I wish I could have real plants. Yes, these are fake. I tend to kill real plants. So I think it's so cute to add um, some crochet plant covers. If you want them as baskets, I just want to note you might want to go down a crochet hook size or two so that it's a really dense fabric that holds up on its own. Not that these don't, they can, but they're a little bit more floppy than I would want as a standalone basket. For our supplies today, we will be using a 5.5 millimeter size eye crochet hook. This is the tulip line. You'll need a pair of scissors and some stitch markers. Of course, you will need some yarn. I use the Dishy Worsted Weight by Wee Crochet. This is the mint, the blush. I think this is just their swan color. These are really pretty. They have so many varieties of colors online. You'll find one to match your own home decor. The other thing is I did these cute little tassels on the front. We're going to go over the tassels and I put some beads on there. You'll notice all these beads are in different sizes, so it's great to buy a variety pack. They're fun to have around in your craft bins. And so let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to be making the size small. I'm going to be making this entire basket in one solid color, but feel free to mix up the colors like these baskets and do a different color on the top if you would like. To get started, we're going to be making the bottom of the basket first, and we'll be working this in the round and joining. And when we get to this part, we're not going to be joining. We're going to be working it continuously, which is why it's important to have a stitch marker nearby for when we need it. To get started, we will do a magic ring or a magic circle, and I'm going to use a stacked single crochet as my first stitch. Now to do a stacked single crochet, you're going to insert your hook into the magic circle, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two loops on your hook. This is a single crochet, but we're not done yet. We're going to go back and insert on this left strand of that single crochet, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through both. So that's a stacked single crochet. And what this does is it, is it gets us to the height that we need for the rest of the stitches in the round, which are double crochet stitches. So now I'm going to double crochet nine stitches into the magic circle which means at the end of this round including that stack single crochet which is our first stitch we will have 10 total stitches so now that i have 10 stitches i can grab that tail end from that magic circle and i can pull that closed and then I'm going to join to the very first stitch in the round, which is our stacked single crochet. I will join with a slip stitch. And then I'm really gonna pull this ring down tight so that there are no gaps. And we can go ahead and weave in that end at this point if you want, or save it until the very end. Now, in our very first stitch, we are going to do a stacked single crochet. So we're going to yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through both the loops. Insert back into that second strand on the left hand side, yarn over and pull up, yarn over and pull through both on the hook. And there's our very first stitch. I do recommend placing a stitch marker at the first stitch in the round. That way, especially that stacked single crochet, that way you know where you are. If you don't want to use a stacked single crochet, you can use the traditional chain two. Now we're going to do a double crochet into that same stitch. And then we're going to do two double crochets into each of the remaining stitches around. So at the end of round two, we will have a total of 20 stitches. Now for the rest of the sizes, they'll continue to increase in this way and you can make this bigger, but I'm going to be um, doing this last round for the bottom here so that I stick with the smallest size. So I am going to join to the first stitch in the round by slip stitching. And then I'm going to do a stack single crochet into the first. Go 
go ahead and place a stitch marker into that first stitch. And now we're going to do a double crochet into the same. We're only going to be increasing by one stitch this round. We're going from an even stitch count to an odd. So for the rest of the stitches around, we are going to just place double crochets. So at the end of this round, we'll have a total of 21 stitches. Now at the end of this round, this would be round five for the bottom of the basket. So if we're doing this small, we'll end up stopping after round two and going to do the round five. So I know we only had three total rounds, but it's that finishing round for the, the bottom of the basket. So we're going to go ahead and slip stitch to join. And now we are going to be moving on to the body of this basket. And to do this next portion, we'll want to be working in the back loops only. That will kind of define moving from the bottom of the basket and help it curl up over. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by working a double crochet stitch, but we're only going to be working in the back loop only. So we'll do a stacked single, a stacked single crochet to get started. And I'm working that in the back loop only. So there's our very first stitch. Remember you can substitute that with a chain two if you're not fond of that stacked single crochet. Then we're going to do a double crochet into each stitch around, but in the back loop only. So working that back loop only double crochet in each stitch around and at the end of the round we'll have 21 stitches. So for this round we are not going to be joining at the end of this round we're not joining this is where we're going to start to work continuously and it makes this next part really easy. We've got an odd number of stitches and we can work this continuously. Now the first stitch in our round we're going to be working around this um, stack single from the round before we're going to be working what's called a puffy post double crochet. So for the very first stitch of this round is we're going to be doing what's called a puffy double crochet stitch and we'll be working around this as a post stitch. I haven't joined and now we're ready to work the first stitch of this puffy stitch. What I will do is I will yarn over work this first stitch as a post stitch. So that means I'm going to go behind the whole stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two of the loops on the hook. We have two loops left on our hook. Then we will yarn over once again, work this as a post stitch on the same stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two of the loops on the hook, then yarn over and pull through the remaining three loops on the hook and go ahead and mark that stitch just so we know where our beginning of the round is because we won't be joining we'll be working this continuously then we will double crochet into the next stitch and make sure it's the very next stitch and not over here so double crochet into that next stitch and then we are going to do another puffy so yarn over working this as a post stitch we're going to insert behind the stitch yarn over and pull up a loop yarn over and pull through two then do this again yarn over work around the stitch as a post stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two. We have three loops remaining on the hook and we will yarn over and pull through the remaining three. And then we're going to double crochet into the next stitch and then do a puffy double crochet. So we're just continuing to do these two stitches, rotating them around and around until we get to about one to one and a half inches from the total height of our basket. So we'll be working this around and around until we start to work on the trim. This will work out because we're doing an odd number of stitches to just keep going around and around. But I want to show you how you can keep track of knowing what you're supposed to work next um, once we get past working these puffies for around. So after completing the first round of these puppy stitches, which is round two of the body, when I come back around, the first stitch of my next round is a double crochet, which is worked into a puffy stitch. So from here on out, you can just keep working around and around and you're working the opposite of the stitch from the round below. So my next stitch is a double crochet and I'll work a puffy stitch around that one. And since my next stitch is a puffy stitch, I'll work a double crochet into that one. So you keep working these stitches and because we're in an odd stitch count, it works out all the way around. 
So you'll keep working this up until you get the height you want. So I have another little planter here that I got from Target that I kind of wanted to cover. So in order to do so, I'll work it up to be just below um, where I want to start the trim, the top trim of this. So work this up in as many rounds as you like, and then come on back. Now that I have the height that I want for this basket, I'm going to start doing the top trim for this. We will be slip stitching into the next stitch to even out that jog because we have a height difference of our current row in the last round that we worked. So once we slip stitch, that evens that out quite a bit. And then we're going to go ahead and single crochet into each stitch around. So that will be a total of 21 single crochet stitches. And then you'll go ahead and do that again for the next round. So we'll be doing two rounds of single crochet stitches. So after two rounds of single crochet, we are going to start by doing an eyelet round. So we're going to do a single crochet in the first stitch and mark it. What this round will do is it will give us places in this to loop our tie through. If you're doing a tie, if you're not doing a tie, then you can go ahead and keep single crocheting. But if you want to do a tie, these will create those holes, those eyelet holes in order to loop the um, eye cord through. So for the next stitch, this will be our repeat. I'm going to chain one skip one single crochet into the next three stitches and that's our repeat around for this so chain one skip one single crochet in three if you get to the end of the round and you have some stitches left you can go ahead and simply single crochet in those And now that we've done the round with our eyelets, we can go ahead and simply single crochet two to three more rounds, however many you like for the top part of this basket. And when you hit those chain spaces, just simply single crochet into that chain space. So I'm going to do a few more rounds and then come on back. So now that I've done as many rounds as I want in this single crochet, I can go ahead and I can fasten off. And I want to show you how to do an invisible join instead of simply slip stitching into the next because we've got still a bit of a jog here, which means one um, round is higher than the other because that's how it goes when we work in the round and crochet. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my yarn needle. And here's how to do a really nice invisible join. So we have this last stitch we worked and then we have the first stitch in the round. I'm going to go ahead and insert my needle into that first stitch as if it were my crochet hook. I'm inserting it in the same way and pulling through and that pulls that down nicely. Then I'm going to go through the top of the stitch straight down the center and then around the back. So you want to come out the back and then pull that and look what that does. It creates a mock stitch so that it's an invisible join. You really can't tell where you started and stopped. Now I'll go ahead and weave in this end, and then we'll talk about that really cool I-cord. So one of the ways you can make an I-cord is with a lucet fork, but today I wanna to show you if you don't have this really cool tool to use. If you do, go over to my blog and learn how to use it. I've got a post on how to do so. You, I wanna show you how to do an I-cord simply just with your crochet hook. Now for this, we're going to take a long strand, it's a little bit longer than you want your um, I cord to end up being. You can always go a little bit longer because you can cut the ends if needed. And then we're going to make a slip knot and place that onto her, our hook. Now what we want to do is we want to hold each strand like so. It'll make it easier to do this. We have the top strand and the bottom strand. And we're going to take our crochet hook and we're going to go down the middle between those two strands and we're going to go under and grab the bottom strand. And then we're going to go back down between those two strands, but up and grab the top strand. And sometimes you got to pinch right here for this very first one so it doesn't slide all around. But then you're going to pull this loop through and this is how we get started. Then this is our motion. We're going to go into this, go under the bottom, into this, under the top pull that strand through. The more you go, the easier it gets because you get a longer strand here that's easier to kind of hold on to. But it's just a simple motion and this creates a really cool looking I cord. Now if you want it to look tighter like it does on here, you can go down a hook size or two and it's really, really beautiful and it's really, really easy to do. You don't have to have any extra tools to do this really cool I cord. 
So you'll make this as long as you want to go around your basket to come out and then to even tie. So you can test, once you get a length, you can start putting it inside here to test it out. So I'm going to make this crochet eye cord and then come on back and show you how to get that onto your basket. And then if you wanna do beads, that's an option too. So as I get in the rhythm of this, I'll end up eventually pinching this, this eye cord with my fingers because it's long enough. And that makes it go a bit faster as I keep moving through the stitches. So once you get to the end, you can simply fasten off and then pull the end through and you can weave in your ends. You can even just grab um, a crochet hook and pull them through. What I like to do is I'm going to end up tying this anyway around um, for the bead. So I'll go ahead and tie this off, put a bead on there, and then I end up snipping my ends, tying them tight and snipping my ends once I get this part of it tied when it's on um, the rope. So I have a couple beads and you're probably wondering like, how do I get this inside here? And I'm going to show you how to do that. But first, what you're going to want to do is weave it through your basket because once you put these, these beads on, it's kind of over, like you can't really put them through um, your basket. So one of these sides has a few more stitches. This is where we began. So I am going to take one end and pull it through from back to front. This will be the front of my basket. And now I'm going to go ahead and take the other end of this and I'm going to weave in and out of those eyelet chain spaces. Now, sometimes depending on the count of however many stitches you have, you might be able to come out right here and then tie together. But for this, the way that this one works out, I am going to be coming out the same eyelet and I'll tie it in the same spot. So they'll both come out one spot and I can cinch and tie just from that one eyelet. But sometimes it'll be that you're coming up through this and then you can just tie together over those stitches. So to get the beads on the end here, what I like to do is take a smaller crochet hook and just kind of loop through that eye cord and then grab a piece of sewing thread and then you're going to pull that through this allows us to have a smaller end to place through the beads and then we'll slide our bead all the way onto the crochet part just like that and then we can remove that thread and then tie a bigger knot in the end of this because we don't want that bead to be able to slide back off of this. So once you have a knot in the end, you can slide your bead back down and then your cute little basket is done and you can tie a knot in the center here after you put it around anything like a, a plant basket if you like. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoy making these Teton stitch baskets. It's really, really fun to do. I love the texture of this stitch. It's really textured for um, home decor. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and come back soon.